Praise the Lord. Get your Bibles out. Praise the Lord. You say, oh, no. Oh, no. What's he going to do today? I hope we've got some good physically fit people in here today. Thank you, Jesus. Just bring those chairs right over here. If you want to get right over here. And just set it right here. No, hit right here like that. There we go. All these chairs, guys, just set them like this all along the way here. Praise the Lord. Just turn it like this way. There we go. Just like that. Just turn them that way, all in a line. I think they should all fit, hopefully. Praise the Lord, just like that. Praise God. Oh, this is good. Doesn't this look like fun? Doesn't this look like fun? Okay, praise the Lord. This is, this is going to be really cool. It, this is going to be really cool. Hello, hello. There we go. Praise God. Get your Bibles out. Thank you, Jesus. Raise it. Oh, stand up on your feet. I think you should stand up. Let's bless the word standing this morning. Praise God. Lift your Bible up or your cell phone. If you're watching the screen this morning to read the scripture, point to the screen. Lord, we bless the word and we thank you for it. We give you praise and honor and glory. We thank you, Jesus, for everything that you're doing for us. We didn't deserve it, but you're doing it anyway, and we thank you for that in the name of Jesus Christ. And everybody said, amen, amen. and you can be seated. Praise the Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Is my mic too loud? It seems like it's really loud. Hey, you can, huh? Hello, sister in Oklahoma. Praise the Lord. Watching this morning, thank you, Jesus. To all of our friends on YouTube, praise the Lord. Hey, just turn around and wave at them. Everybody turn around and wave at those people. Praise God. I don't know how many people it is, but Trent, how many people are watching right now? How many? 16. Okay, Trent, come up here for a second. Praise the Lord. If I can find my notes, uh, thank you, Jesus. We might be. Is anybody else hot? Okay, it's really warm in here. It's really hot. It's really, really hot. We're not going to turn. We can't turn it down. Okay, so this is my son, Trent. And Trent, you were, you were telling me last week on Sunday, you were telling me about the YouTube and about how many folks were watching what that makeup was. You want to talk about that a little bit? Uh, oh, uh, yeah. So, well, he was wondering how many people were watching in America and, like, other countries because you can see all the demographics and since we started YouTube probably, what was that, maybe November of 2020, about half of the people that have been watching have been from other countries. So it's pretty cool to see that uh, people from other, other countries are watching. So um, yeah, only 48% only are from America. So and we, can, we can't really see necessarily where each country uh, they are from, but it's cool to see that we're reaching other parts of the world. Praise the Lord. Okay, so Trent, we're going to do this right now so we don't forget. Trent um, works for a company called Brave Wilderness, and it's a YouTube channel in Westerville. And he's traveled all over the world with them, and he is leaving tomorrow to go to... Costa Rica. Costa Rica for two weeks. And what's the temperature going to be in Costa Rica for the next... 87 degrees. <laughs> I feel so bad for him. Not really. <laughs> uh, but he wants us to pray for him, because uh, I think that's... How long is that flight? Five or six. There's a, lot of, uh, a lot of, there's a lot of like COVID rules we have to follow. We have to pass a uh, negative test to get back into the U.S. or we'll have to stay uh, quarantined in Costa Rica. So just a lot of like bells and whistles to check that are different than normal stuff and just overall protection because we work with a lot of deadly animals too. So deadly, deadly animals. You need to be careful, boy. So let's pray for Trent right now. Reach your hand out, uh, out here. Father, we just lift Trent up to you right now. And God, I just pray for your protection over him. And the whole team going down there to Costa Rica. God, I thank you for Trent. I love my son, Lord. And I just pray for your blessing and your protection over him. And uh, Coyote and Mario and anybody else that's going, Lord, we just thank you for a safe flight and safe times down there in the name of Jesus. And everybody said, amen. amen. Praise God. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Um, <clears throat> as you can tell, um, we're doing something today. Uh, and some, <laughs> some unsuspecting, unwitting men in this place are going to get to help me today. Does that sound like fun? 
Yes, okay. Um, so this last week, I felt like the Lord just was saying a couple of words to me, okay? And I, when God does that, um, I know what I'm supposed to talk about, but I really did not fully understand, and I don't know that this will take just one Sunday or not. It might take a couple Sundays, but that's okay. We don't have to rush God's word, right? So anyway, um, I felt like the Lord was saying two words to me, narrow way. Okay, say narrow way. Yeah. Narrow way. And I got to looking and I thought, you know what? I think I've preached on this before recently. And I did back in July. Does everybody remember that message? Okay, good. I'm, so you're, gonna get to, you're not going to hear that one again, but you're going to hear a, a, maybe a variation on that. Um, and I, I kept, when I, once I found that, I wanted to argue with God, right? Does anybody ever argue with God? I kind of wanted to argue with God. Well, like, well, God, they just heard this in July. I don't know that we need to talk about this again. You know, me telling God, you know, what we need to talk about. And he's, and I just kept feeling narrow way, narrow way, narrow way. And I felt like the Lord said to me, well, I, I got my, my Bible out and I read those scriptures. It's just two scriptures, actually, um, Matthew 7. If you want to put that up there on the screen, Matthew 7, 13, or you can turn to it in your Bible. Um, so when I, when I opened the scripture, the Lord spoke to me. Do you know that God will speak to you when you will be obedient to him? Do you, do you hear me? When you are obedient to the Lord... He will show you things. He will tell you things. But see, we don't want to do that because we've got our own agenda, right? Thank God nobody in this room has their own agenda, right? You're liars. Okay. So anyway, I felt like the Lord said, read it. So I read it. And I felt like the Lord said, I'm going to give you everything you need to say that I want you to say about this, okay? So if you don't like what I'm about to say, you need to talk to God, not me, okay? It's not, it has, this has nothing to do with me. This is all about God. So let's read this scripture. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. The, the, the way, enter by the narrow gate. Jesus said, I, so I'm, I'm calling this message enter in right now. I'm not sure if that'll change as I go along. But, you know, enter in. Enter by. Enter by. Do you know that God wants you to enter into what he's got for you? And there's a lot of people resisting. Resisting, resisting, resisting. They're pushing back on God because they think there's something better out there that they can be part of, right? Yeah, yeah. Enter by the narrow gate, for wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction. And there are many who go in by it. And that's the truth, isn't it? There's a lot of people headed for destruction, complete and total destruction. Are you guys with me this morning? You done? Are you done? We can leave right now if you want to. I'll just go ahead and keep preaching to the folks on YouTube, whoever they are. I mean, there's a bunch of people headed towards destruction. Let me, let me say it this way. People that you know that are headed towards destruction. There are people that you know that are going to go to hell because they refuse Jesus Christ. And you can't change that. That's, that's in their heart. But one thing that you can do is speak Jesus to them. And we're going to talk about that in a minute. Let's go to verse 14. Because narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way which leads to life, and there are few who find it. I, I'm still struggling a little bit with what God wants me to say about this, because there, it, it's kind of self-explanatory right here, right? The, 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 the gate is narrow, and difficult is the way which leads to life. And there are a few who find it. That, we don't want to hear that, do we? We want it to be easy. I, you know, I'm, I'm really bad about this. I like things to be easy. 
I don't like things to be difficult. I don't like things to be hard. I want them to be easy. But there are things in the kingdom that are not easy. That are, um, so let's just, um, so I need a guy up here that can help me with this. Um, willing to, well, let's see. If you don't, if you don't volunteer, I'm going to call on you. Daryl, get up here, Daryl. This is going to be really cool, actually. Daryl. Before I have you, just come right up here on the stage. Before I have you do this, I just want to tell you right now, I'm sorry. <laughs> All right. You'll try anything once, right? All right, now, so I, I was thinking about this all week. I thought, what is a, is a good way to, to illustrate the narrow way? Right? Right? What do you think? The... So, Daryl, get down on your knees. Oh, no, you're not sitting, buddy. Daryl, so get down further. Oh, no, no, all the way. Look over this way. Look over this way. I want you to crawl through there. Yes. Yes. This, this is the narrow way. Come on. All the way, buddy. <laughs> this is... No, keep going, Daryl. Keep going. <laughs> You, you say when you're done. <laughs> you're, you're, you're making it. You're making it. You're making it. Let's see. Lower your butt a little bit. Lower your butt a little bit. See, this is coaching in life, right? He's going to do it. He's going to do it. But, and I think right on the heels of Daryl, what about Ron? Ron, come on. Right on the heels of Daryl. I think this is cool. Well, I'm smaller than him, so I won't take, I'll let him get through I think this is cool. <laughs> and see, look, and look at that. And you've got the enemy coming along trying to hold you back. Right? I mean, he's doing it. And let me just say, there's, this can't feel good on your belly when you're rubbing across. Keep going, man. You got to go. Let's see, is Ron going to get through there? I don't know. <laughs> I love this. I love this. The chair. Oh, the, yeah, this, this is a narrower chair. <laughs> Here, give me your hand. I'll help pull you. <laughs> Come on. I feel like I'm birthing a baby here. Woo! <laughs> Praise the Lord. Now get your bearings. Don't, don't stand up too quickly. If I would do that, I'd probably. Okay, good. Gina, come on. Ron needs some cheering on. <laughs> Ron's coming. Ron, Ron, Ron. Ron, Ron, Ron. <laughs> You're done. You're done. <laughs> Thank you, Daryl. Woo! <laughs> And, and that's another good lesson. There are believers that try to hold us back. Right? You know it. Thank you. Now, I want to ask these. Wait, come back, come back up here, Daryl. Ron, come over here. Come back up here. I'm sorry. Listen, you're not going to get this at any other church in the city, so you may as well figure that out right now. Uh, so I want to ask you a question. And I, I wasn't trying to pick the oldest guys and the biggest guys to do this, but they volunteered, right? Daryl did, Ron didn't. So, <laughs> are you hot now? <laughs> so, I want to I wanna ask you, was that easy? No. No. What, so, what was, the hard, what was the hard part of it? Uh, the narrowness of it. Yes, and uh, being tight. And um, what I want to say, having... Better be Jesus. Having to just maneuver, but still stay in the same uh -huh. direction, on the same single line, so straight. Let me, let me, I want to ask you this. What did you feel about everybody watching you? Didn't have a problem with it. Mm -hmm. did you, was, it was it embarrassing that you're trying to put your six, seven, 
six, what are you, six seven? Six seven. Six seven body. I won't ask you how much you weigh, but. 288. 288. <laughs> trying, to, trying to put your 6'7", 288 body through that little narrow space. Especially the last chair there. It was a little tighter. <laughs> yeah, it was through much tribulation we enter the kingdom of God. Yeah, but it was tight. Um, no, I wasn't worried about what other think, others were thinking. I was just worried about am I going to make it. Yeah. Uh, it was tight. It was tight? Yeah. <laughs> what, what were you thinking about everybody watching you laughing at you? That's, that's fine. Yeah, I'm a soldier for Christ, so it's all right. So what, so, yeah. so what, about, what about the journey? Did you, what was that like? So I've learned to like difficult situations because that's when God shows up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, so what, was, what was it like trying to crawl through that situation? It was uncomfortable. It was uncomfortable. Why was it uncomfortable? Because I'm fat. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I, I did the uh, oh, the yeah. elbow thing. Yeah. Yeah. So, what do you guys think? Any any thoughts on their their uh, journey, their travel, their any critique uh, that you could think they could have done it better? They didn't give up. They, they, they what? They didn't give up. They pushed through it. I like that. I like. Well, thank you guys. Give them a hand, would you please? Oh. Um. from me. You will stand up, lady. I just noticed that after the first two chairs that Daryl went through, he developed a technique that helped him get through easier the rest of the chairs. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. I think some of us are developing techniques, aren't we? <laughs> We're trying. Does anybody else want to try this? I think we need somebody else. Come on, Jamie. Come on. Come on, Ashley. Get up here. <clears throat> All right. Are you ready? Go. I'm not gonna let you go <laughs> Look at this. She's not being. Woo! Go, Jamie. Go, Jamie. Go, Jamie. Okay, Ashley. Woo! Look at these ladies. Yeah. Good job. Woo! Now stay right here. Stay right here. Look at this. This is interesting. I'm seeing something here. I'm seeing. Woo! Yeah! Good job. Come down here. Come down here. All right, so I want to ask you, now these ladies are younger than those men, all right? I'm going to give, I'm going to give them a, they're, they're both up there in years. <laughs> I'm older than both of you, so I'm, but, but, so the, the, what, what could you see about the men's technique versus the ladies? Anybody? What? The women were, the women did, I mean, the men were kind of slow, right? And, but they didn't give up. So what did you think of that, Ashley? That was hard. It was hard? Why was it hard? Because it was so small, but I just kept pushing through. Yeah, so what did you think about the crowd's response to you? I mean, did you, were you conscientious at all because they're watching you? No. You, you were cool with it? Yeah. Cool? What about you, Jamie? What, what was the... I don't know. I got total vision. I was like, I'm going to do this, and I'm going to do it fast and good. <laughs> do, you, do, you see, do you see how it, it's so interesting to me to see we have four people here who had four different perspectives of what it's like to go through that narrow passageway, but they didn't give up. They're pushing along, and like, like Tammy said, I think it's interesting, they all had, did you notice they all had different techniques for getting through their, April, you want to say something? So did any of you think about stopping or going, like trying to get out of the, at all, Ron? No, Daryl, no. Ladies, did you think about stopping? So, what do, what do you think about that, April? I think that Absolutely. Anybody ever, has anybody, you don't have to raise your hand, I'm just asking the question. Has any, have any of you been, you can sit down, thank you, sorry ladies. That was a wonderful, give them a hand, <laughs> praise the Lord. Have any of you been tempted yeah. to, to step out? 
and to step, yeah, step out of the way. Right, come here, you, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to call on you. So I'm not going to make you go through there. Do you want to go through there? No. <laughs> so, so you were struggling last week, right? Yes. And it was very public because you put it on Facebook. And I was praying for you. But in that, in that journey, in that struggle, you asked me this morning, you said, what can I do? And I said, you know, I, I can tell you what I do. I just say, Jesus, I'm not giving up. I'm not turning my back. I'm not turning away. Um, I, I told Tammy last night, yesterday, the enemy was just trying to, and, and maybe this has happened to you before, but the enemy was just trying to just pour over a couple of different motion, emotions on me, okay? Two, two emotions. One, an emotion of impending doom. Maybe you've, you've felt that before. Something bad's going to happen. Something bad's going to happen. And then the other one was, now listen, that you're going to die, right? Have you, ever, have you ever had that feeling? The enemy wants to get you to convince, wants to convince you you're going to die. You're going to die. You're, well, guess what? We're all going to die someday, but not today in the name of Jesus. And, you know, I just had to deal with those. And I believe, I totally believe, Sean L., this is that's part of that narrow way that we are that we are going down. It, it is narrow. It is narrow. It is constricting sometimes. And it's like, God, why is this happening to me? Why am I going through this? Why isn't everything just wide open? And we keep calling out and calling out and saying, God, do something. And he's like, I am doing something. I am doing something. I'm getting you through that. Thank you, ma'am. I'm getting you through that that passageway. You know, we want God to make it bigger. God, make this way bigger. He's like, it's narrow. It is narrow. Yes, ma'am, you want to say something? I also want to say it's a lot easier when we can visually see the end of the Bible. Mm-hmm. Things come through. It is, and, and thank you. Okay, so she said it's a lot easier when we can see that the end is, is, is in sight. And all these folks could see that the end is down here. But guess what? Sometimes we don't see God's end. We don't see it. We don't see what he's doing. We don't see where we're going. We don't see how this is going to work out. We're, we're struggling and we're, oh, I'll get back to you. What We're struggling and we're frustrated. And we're like, God, I can't see. And then it's exactly what April said. We walk by faith and not by sight. So what, what is that? Faith becomes our sight. What God says about us and what, where he is taking us, we don't have to see where we're going. Hey, I'm just doing what God's called me to do. You know, I was thinking about all this stuff that, that uh, Shad announced today. You know, we've got um, the ladies, uh, this ladies tea meeting coming up. And I want to say Tammy has done a lot of special things to make that uh, she like she's flooding my house with stuff and it's like oh, you bought more stuff and, and she's like it's going to the church I'm like oh great we got space at the church for it too but I mean so we've got the ladies tea and we've got this special meeting with uh, the other three churches we're meeting in March uh, the table of grace that's in two months Two months' time. All, well, actually, all that is in the month of March and late, early April. And my mind says, how are you going to do it? 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 How, well, you know, where's all the people going to come from? How are you going to get all these things done? Da, 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 da. That's how my mind thinks. I think in a gazillion different details. You say, oh, we got to do this. Instantly, my mind, all the details of everything that we've got to do will come right into this head, and I'll have to try to figure out how is that going to happen. But I think when we walk by faith, we say, you know what? We're going to reach people for Jesus. We're going to reach people for Jesus. I mean, those are different kinds of ways, in totally different ways, that we're going to reach people for Jesus Christ. Because you know what? This is... This is uh, the end times. We're, if we're not in the end times, we're about to cross over into the end times. This is, not, this is not a game that we are playing right now. Did you want to say something real quick? Did you, you didn't have your hand? Oh, you were just putting your hand up? Oh. Okay, if it comes back. Tamara, what do you want to say? Yes. 
Yes. Thank you, bumps and bruises. and might feel a little worse. You know, you're walking in this walk with Christ, and we want everything to feel good, and everything's going to be perfect. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Do you want to say something, Daryl? You were what? You got stuck. Mm -hmm. Right. So, oh, wow. That's, that's beautiful, Daryl. That a season. Did you hear what he said? You maybe you're maybe you're like in a season, and you feel stuck, and you feel like God. I can't go on. I can't go on anymore. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I'm and God, I'm, you're what? I'm tired. I'm tired. I'm tired's a big one, right? How many of you have ever been tired? And I want to show hands. How many of you have ever been tired in your walk with Jesus and you've thought, I don't know if it's worth it? Hello, I'm putting both hands up. I felt that way. I felt that way about the church. God, I don't know if I can keep doing this. I don't know, I don't, God, am I the right person for this? You know, the devil's always trying to convince you you're not the right person for the thing God has called you to do. God's already decided you were the right person or he would never have called you to do it. Praise the Lord. I want to read another scripture here. Um, that word narrow, I know, there's, I know there's some people that are just begging to get up here and try the obstacle course. I'll be right with you. Um, so that word straight, but narrow is the gate and difficult is the way, which leads to life, and there are few who find it. I think it's pretty interesting that there's as many people in here that there are today, you know, or as many people watching. You know, we found it, we're here. We, we're, we're seeing that there is more to life than, than just living for ourselves. There's more. God's got a plan for us. Um, is, it, is, it verse, um, is it verse 13? Uh, is that straight? Is it verse 13? Go back to 13. Narrow is the gate, and difficult is the way. Enter by the narrow gate. It's probably King James. That's all right. We're not going to mess. Yeah, we're not going to mess with it. Narrow, uh, that word narrow, is that word narrow up there? Yeah, narrow is the Greek word thlebo. Press hard. Crowd, crowded, tribulation, trouble. What is Jesus, what is he trying to do? Thin the herd by telling us, look, you know, it's, it's, um, it's straight. I, I made a straight, you know, what does that word straight mean? Narrow, I made a narrow, I was thinking about this all week long, how were we going to do this? And then I was here Thursday or Wednesday night for Bible study, and, and I felt like the Lord said, hey, those chairs would work really good. I'm like, praise the Lord, you could get a body through there, right? Even a big body, you could get a big body through there. We did, we got Daryl through there, 288 pounds, six, six, seven. praise the Lord. And so some of you think, I just don't know if I can make it through those chairs. I can, I can see it right now after church, a bunch of people are going to be up here lined up trying to get through these chairs. I can see, I know what you're thinking. Um, crowded, tribulation, trouble. Anybody interested? Anybody want to sign up? I got the sign-up sheet for Table of Grace here. If you haven't signed up and you want to sign up, please sign up because we want, we want to make this a real outreach for Jesus. But I'm, and I, I think it's probably going to be, um, you're going to have to give some stuff up. You're going to have to give up some time. You're going to have to, you're going to, there might be a time when you're like, oh, I can't do this. Why did I sign up for this? This isn't me. This isn't who I am. I don't think I can do this. I need to quit now. But yet, you need to press through. You need to press forward. And Jesus is telling us, you know what? Um, there's a go to, go to, go, blah, 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 blah. there's a, a narrow, straight is the gate, narrow is the way which leads to life, and few there be the find it. Go back to verse 13 again. Um, wide is the gate and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and there are many who go in by it. There's a bunch of people walking towards their own destruction. And it's very sad. It's very sad. And here we sit. 
with all this knowledge and all this understanding, and, and God is, is telling us something. Um, can we go to Matthew 16, 24? Matthew 16, 24. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Let's, let, can we read that together? Then Jesus said to his disciples, if anyone desires to come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Hmm. That's interesting stuff, isn't it? And you thought that today, oh, we're going to come and we're going to sing a whole bunch of worship songs, and then you've got this crazy pastor up here having people go through this really narrow way. And he says it's going to be hard. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be tribulation. I'm, these aren't my words. These are Jesus' words. And he said, hey, deny yourself. Isn't that a really nice, warm, and fuzzy thing? It's, it's cold outside. I'm going to go home and make a whole bunch of Mexican food for my kids. We're going to eat Mexican food when we get home. And we're going to stay inside, and I'm going to have the fireplace on. It's going to be warm. And I'm going to drink a cup of coffee while I'm doing that, okay? I got it all worked out. It's all worked out. I got it. It's going to happen right after we leave. So we get, every, we get everything worked out in our minds, don't we? We get everything worked out in our lives, and everything's going to be fine and, and work just the way I said. And then Jesus comes along, and he says, hey, deny yourself. Well, what, part of the, what, what do I need to deny, Lord? One extra taco? Do I need to? What about the cupcake I want to eat with the coffee? Right? Right? Deny yourself. What, what, what is it that Jesus has been saying to you this week to deny and to get away from and to stop doing and to get away from those people or get away from that television show or get away from that magazine or get away from that bad attitude? What is he telling you? What? What is, it that, what is it that God has been saying? Deny yourself and take up your cross. Where does the cross lead to? Does anybody know? Where does the cross lead to? Where? So it leads to salvation, but, but for salvation, where does the cross lead to? Death. It leads to death. It, I mean, we talked about the cross last week, I think, didn't we? No, two weeks ago. The cross leads to death. You take your cross and you go to the place of execution and put yourself up there. And you die. You die to self. I, I wonder where God wants to take me every day. Every day I'm, I'm like, God, where, what, what is it that you want to do with me? Where is it that you want to take me? And I've been going through a lot of weirdness in my body, again, because of my thyroid, and I'm believing God for restoration and healing. But there have been days, before we came out here, my head was pounding, like it was And I'm like, I will be fine in the name of Jesus. I will be fine, this is going away. Guess what, it's gone. It's gone. So, you know, every day, I'm, my, my body, my flesh, doesn't want to cooperate. It doesn't want to do what I know God wants me to do. But I'm just this kind of person. I'm like, I'm not stopping. God, I'm not stopping. If they have to pick me up and stand me up and say, you're not done yet. Get up. I mean, are, do, you, do you understand what I'm saying? There are people in here, you need to start denying yourself. It could mean your life. There are people watching. If you do not, listen to what I'm saying. Listen, this isn't my message. This is God's message. Quite frankly, I, I wanted to take the easy way out and go through here and say, God, I got, I got a whole bunch of good stuff in here. I got tons of stuff in my office. Messages I've preached for 32 years. I can find something. And God said, narrow way, Tom. Narrow way. I'm like, oh, Jesus. Take up your cross. Verse 20, uh, ta -ta -ta, verse 25. Oh, wait, go back, go back. Take up your cross and what? Follow me. Follow me. I mean, I want to ask this question. Don't raise your hand. 
how many of you have been following Jesus this week? You know, God has told you something. He's asked you to do something, and it was within your ability to do, and you didn't do it. Maybe it was to buy somebody's lunch. Maybe it was to tell somebody about Jesus. Maybe God put somebody on your heart and said, you need to call them right now and pray for them right now. But you were afraid. You were afraid. They think you were a kook. Maybe they already do. Right? Mm -mm -mm. You guys are really quiet. Either you're really mad at me and you want to shove me through the maze or follow me, verse 25. For whoever desires to save his life will lose it. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Are you, are you losing your life? I, I, you know what I think is so interesting? We make decisions every day about what is important, every single day. And people, uh, yeah, I get it. I mean, I'm not condemning anybody, so please, this is my disclaimer. I mean, people stay home. They don't go to church. They don't watch church. They, they goof off. They do things that are, they think more important. And I'm telling you, one of these days, one of these days, very soon possibly, and we could be locked out of this building. And what, you know, then everybody's going to want to come to church. Everybody's going to want to be here. You know, it's, it's kind of ridiculous, but we're only doing 200 people uh, for March 12th. And I haven't, I haven't thought about restrictions for the table of grace, but I don't want to do any restrictions on anything, nothing. But you know what? We're going we're gonna to do, we're doing 200 people so we can have distancing and all that kind of stuff. But I'm telling you, there's going to come a day you, you, need to, you need to follow Jesus. But whoever loses his life for my sake will find it. Verse 26. For what profit is it if a man, to a man, if he gains the whole world and loses his own soul? Or what will a man give in exchange for his soul? What, what, what have you given in exchange to do what you want to do whenever you want to do it? You say, oh, Pastor Tom, you don't understand how busy my life is. You know what? I don't want to hear it. Come and try to stay up with me. You know what? You wouldn't believe it. You wouldn't believe. I'm not complaining. I love it. But I'm telling you, we make a lot of excuses about what we can and cannot do. And God is saying, look, this is a narrow way. It is not always going to be easy. There's going to be trouble. There's going to be tribulation. There's going to be hard times. But I'm going to be with you. I'm going to help you through it. Are you ready? Do you want more? I mean, I, I'll tell you what I'm believing for. I'm believing that the for every service, every time we come in here, that the power and anointing of God is going to fall in this place. And that people who need healed are going to receive healing. That people who need deliverance are going to be delivered. That people who have not received the baptism in the Holy Spirit are going to receive the baptism in the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, what, where's your faith? What do you believe in God for? You know, all day long, if you're out there living however you want to live, and then you come in here expecting for God to do something big in your life. Because, well, God, I'm ready for it now. Whoa. Are you kidding? I'm, I'll, I'll tell you what. I am not perfect by any stretch. But I am believing God every day. God, I want to see you move. 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 And then he says, okay, what are you willing to push aside, Tom? What are you willing to push aside? You don't, I mean, you know, most people don't like these kinds of messages because it's, it makes us think back to ourselves. What are we really doing? What are we believing? We say one thing and we do another. You know what? We got to get over that. We got to stop that. Just a second. Um, can we go to Matthew 7.15? I think, Matthew 7, 15. Where are we at? Okay. Beware of false prophets who come to you in sheep's clothing, but inwardly they are ravenous wolves. You will know them by their fruit. Okay, it, let, me, let me just say right now. <laughs> you will know them by their fruits. Do men gather grapes from thorn bushes or figs from thistles? 
Even so, every good tree bears good fruit, but a bad tree bears bad fruit. Bad trees bear bad fruit. Let's keep going. A good tree cannot bear bad fruit, nor can a bad tree bear good fruit. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. You know, there's going to be a lot of people that say, well, Jesus, I didn't know, I didn't know what I was supposed to do. <laughs> yes, you did. I told you. Others have told you. If, you. if you've got bad fruit coming from the tree, you're running a risk. Do you hear me? You're running a risk. Don't, aren't you glad you came to church today? Hallelujah. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. You know, we sang that song last week, all week long. Every time, every time I was singing this song, oh, I want to be tried by fire purified. I started it too high. I, I want to be tried by fire, purified. I mean, ouch. Do we know what fire does? It burns. It burns. And I thought, God, what am I singing? I'm actually singing that I want to be burned up. Ouch. Ouch. Every tree that does not bear good fruit is cut down and thrown into the fire. Verse uh, 20. Therefore, by their fruit, you will know them. By their fruit. You know, I, I want to say this. It amazes me the number of people that think that I am deaf, dumb, and blind. Do you understand what I'm saying? A lot of people think I can't see. A lot of people think I can't hear. A lot of, a, a lot of people think that you can't see what they're doing in their lives. And that, you know, they, they, are, they are blissfully blind to their own ways. And they're just going through life, pardon me for saying it this way, but screwing around, and they're all messed up. But they think nobody else can see it. You know what that's called? That's called fruit. People will see your fruit. They'll see what's coming from you. Therefore, by their fruits you will know them. Verse 21. Not everyone who says to me, listen, 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 listen. Not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord. I, I want to say this. I want to say this. So I, I went and I did what the Lord told me to do. I went to Matthew chapter 7 and I read that scripture, enter in at the narrow gate. Narrow way. I, I went and I did what he told me to do. Then do you know what he told me? He said, Tom, take up your cross. And then he said, Tom, fruit. So do you see what the Lord did? He made this message. So look, not everyone who says to me, Lord, Lord, shall enter the kingdom of heaven, but he who does the will of my Father in heaven. Stop deceiving yourself, thinking that you can continue to do the bad things that you're doing, and everything's going to be fine. Right? And it's, I'm not speaking to anybody in this room. I'm just talking to people on Facebook because, or, or YouTube. Well, definitely Facebook, but YouTube because they need it. I'm just kidding. I'm talking to all of us. Verse 22, many will say to me in that day, Lord, Lord, have we not prophesied in your name? Oh, Jesus, I'm a prophet. Cast out demons in your name and done many wonders in your name. There's a lot of people that they think they got it all together, and they think that, you know, because they're operating in those things, but their fruit stinks. It's rotten, and you know, have you ever stepped in a mushy apple or a mushy, mushy uh, a fallen from the tree, days and days old peach or apple, and it gets in your toes? I have. Verse 23, and then I will declare to them, I never knew you. Depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. I'm telling you, I, I think uh, if we do not talk, if you see, the phone is ringing and somebody needs to pick it up, right? The phone's ringing. Somebody needs to pick it up. You guys are really quiet. <clears throat> it's time for fruit. It's time to understand that this, this we, we want everything to be cushy, I think that um, some things are going to happen 
in the coming days and weeks and months and years that are going to challenge our faith. People are going to come to you and say, oh, are you a believer? Are you one of those people? Well, we don't hire people like that. We don't want you here. What are you going to do? I mean, I think trying times are coming, folks, because, because of this, this narrow way that we believe. How, how many of you ever heard the, these two words together? Or maybe four words. You are narrow-minded. Have you ever heard that? What, what is, is, that a, is that a good thing that they're thinking about you? No. No, that's a, they, they think that's a bad thing. But Jesus said, you better be narrow thinking. I'm, not talk, I'm talking about narrow, narrow from the perspective of this. You better know this. This is going to separate you from the world. This is going to make you not part of them. Not part of what they do. Not part of how they act. Not part of how they talk. Not part of how they think. It's, this, is, this is narrow to them. But Jesus said it's life. This, this to us is life. This is life. The Bible says in Proverbs, I think it's 4, I think it's 4, 20. It's in somewhere 18, 19, or 20. Um, oh, for goodness sakes, now I've totally left my mind. Give me, give me a break. I want to read it. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Proverbs. <clears throat> Keep your heart. Oh, no, 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 no. Uh, uh, my son, give attention to my words. 420. If you can put it up there, I don't know. Uh, Proverbs 420. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Huh? What'd you say? Don't let them depart from your eyes. This is the problem with a lot of people. They're not reading the Word of God. I'll tell you what. We've been reading the Word of God as part of the, as part of the men's fellowship. And I, I, this week I've been on Numbers and Leviticus. It's amazing. It, it's amazing. It's amazing the things that I, I just haven't read those Old Testament books for a long time. And it's amazing to hear what God wants no part of that we have allowed in. Mm -hmm. My son, give attention to my words. Incline your ear to my sayings. Don't let them depart from your eyes. Keep them in the middle of your heart for they are life to those that find them and health to all their flesh. We have more sick people in the world, I think, than maybe ever before. I don't know. And where, where's the word? Where is the word of God? You know, they are, the, these words are life to those that find them and health to their flesh. I'm, I'm going to stop. I got a little more. I'm going to share maybe a little. I don't know. We'll see what happens next week. But I want to I share with you, it's a narrow way. This is a narrow way. And God is calling us to more. And just, I, I loved seeing these people go through this. It inspired me because they were all different, but they didn't give up. It was an obstacle. It was hard. It was compression. It was difficult, but they didn't stop. So I, I want to encourage you this week that you do not stop in this walk with the Lord. Don't give up. Keep going. Keep moving. Keep standing. Keep believing. Keep trusting. God's got a plan. You want to say something? Right there, you're talking about giving up, losing confidence in yourself. And you made a statement about you felt like giving up. And you, I, you said, I can't go on. How am I going to do this? Well, God said, in Hebrews 10.35, do not throw your confidence away. It has a great reward. Don't throw it away. This week, you know what? This, this might be a message that is very timely for some. This could be just for one person in this room. Maybe just one person. And the Lord is taking you. Uh, he, he wants you to hear this. 
so that this week, when you hit that obstacle in the narrow place, you're, you're like, wait a minute, I just heard this. I can do this. I stand up on your feet. I want to pray. Um, Tammy, would you come up? Daryl, would you come up? Uh, Bill and Sheila, did you want to come up and pray? Can you do that, Sheila? Okay. Um, you just stand over there, Tammy. Here's the oil. Listen, I don't want you to leave today. Here's the oil. I don't want you to leave today if you need prayer. If you've been going through something that has been discouraging you and frustrating you. If, if the enemy has been trying to drag you down to the pit. I mean, the, I'm telling you, this feel, these feelings that I was having yesterday were very real and very strong. And I had to stand against them. You're not going to kill me, devil. And I'm not giving up. Don't give up. Daryl, come down here with Tammy on that side. I mean, don't give up. If you need prayer, I want you to come up here and get it. You, you pick the person you like the best, and they will pray for you. They will anoint you with oil. They will pray for you and believe God for a good outcome in your life. Let's pray right now. Father, in Jesus' name, I lift up every person in this place, and I pray, God, that you just guide them and lead them and help them this week. I pray, God, that they will not give up, that they will not turn back, but that they will keep pressing forward in this walk, in this journey with you. Lord, I thank you that the way is narrow, it is hard, but you do not give up on us and you give us the strength. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me and I will not cast away my confidence in the Lord to deliver me. Father, we thank you for that. We bless you and we praise you and give you all the glory in the name of Jesus Christ. God bless you today as you go and if you need prayer, please come up and get it. Praise the Lord as you go.